genesis of Next Term really came from a conversation about what it means to prepare students for a world of constant change. We needed to create a program that would allow students to um, actually do things in the real world as opposed to hear about those things being done. Experiential education works because when students are doing things as opposed to just hearing about those things, there's a clear indication in the research that learning happens best that way. As a teacher, when you're developing a course, creating a course, proposing a course, this is something that you want to take a deep dive into. So this is, in a sense, like your passion project. We started planning how we would roll out uh, course selection, how we would introduce the students to the, the different courses that would be available to them. We did come up with a fair format, so we set up uh, tables in the gym so that the students can walk around and hear about what the different courses entailed. The next term is as beneficial for the teachers as for students because oftentimes we get told here teach this and next term is saying like what do you want to teach where do you want to go i decided to do the thrill rides class because i mean i love roller coasters so that was my initial thought but also, I wanted to challenge myself because I'm not really a math, science oriented person. Uh, English and other subjects like that come easier to me. But I thought if I was going to spend three weeks during one, doing one class and focusing on one subject, I wanted it to be something that I'd learn a lot from. Uh, I'd never taken physics before. A lot of the other kids in the class were, had taken AP physics and really high levels of math. But they always helped me along the way. We were really a team who worked together. I feel like you learn the best uh, lessons and most important things when you're out of your comfort zone. I wasn't ever planning on taking physics at Hun, and now I'm enrolled in honors physics, and it actually gave me a good jump start on the beginning of the year. But it also, just all around, makes you feel more confident in yourself, and maybe in an area that you're not so confident in. And for me, that was math and science. Ghana was going to bring me closer to my family because my father was from Sierra Leone and I wanted to experience the culture in West Africa. We went to this high school that had a mix of former child slaves and uh, just normal high school students. We uh, were able to exchange cultures. They showed us dances. We showed them our games. The, the slave castle was another big highlight for me. Pitch black and it was complete darkness. Certain slaves would be sitting in those chambers for at least six months before they would be shipped off to America. Our locked me in there and then he had me uh, just like trying to sit in there for like a few minutes and it made me realize how terrible it was to be in that chamber for so long. Just to be able to bring that back to America and just show how certain people push through adversity was just a life-changing experience for me. First major project we had to show why Hunt should be a national park. So it was our big thing to kind of learn what makes National Park a National Park. And after we finished that project, we did our first trip to Shenandoah. And then we went to Yellowstone. So every day we did a bunch of hikes. One day we went to the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. We saw Grand Prismatic. I took away just how important the environment is and how you should preserve what land we have. Each group was responsible for making an ebook. The students were creating a national park guide for young people that leveraged modern digital technology. The kids knew they were creating a guide for another generation of students to experience the things they had experienced in the parks. And so there was a sense of pride in that work product that I think was incredibly profound for, for students. In the past, I've learned a lot about like the civil rights movement and a lot of the history during that time, but I haven't really gone to the places to experience it. When you go there, you get to talk to people and you really get like a different appreciation for the topic. There's a lot of pictures and videos that we can watch, but to like actually be there and walk across, it just felt like we were in touch with like the same time period and all the things that we were really watching. It just felt so surreal that I just really liked that part. I think the most rewarding part was at the end when we put together the museum. It just felt really rewarding to teach people about all of the stuff that we felt really passionate about.
the theme behind the trip was mainly exploring unheard voices in French history. So a lot of parts of French history have basically been swept under the rug. And so we spent time in different towns hearing testimonies from certain people that have not had their voices heard throughout French history. We stopped in a small town in the south of France called Rougeon, and we went to uh, an internment camp. We went to Lyon, which was the headquarters of the Gestapo. And so they turned that into the Museum for the French Resistance, which was amazing to see. I think experience overall is the, the best teacher, but to be able to be there and see where everything happened is something that is hard to replicate and, and hard to describe and only can be experienced when you're there in person. So we wanted to actually tell the stories of the people that we had interviewed and, and had seen and all the testimonies we had heard. This, is, this really happened, these were real people that have just simply been forgotten throughout history and the main point of it was to do it justice however we felt necessary. going into it, we we're going to get to study the history of the culture of the Navajo people, but we're also going to learn about the nature in Arizona, the topography. You don't really get to combine subjects like that in any other setting. Typically in the morning, we would start by going to our guide's ranch that was self-sustaining. We would do a little bit of work on his ranch, learn about his culture. He would have some family over there. Our guide lives pretty far from any other type of civilization, and they eat what they grow, and they just kind of live off the land. The hikes in general, you get to like understand why they're living the way they do. Big emphasis on mindfulness and being in the moment. The biggest part of their culture is that they're just one part of like the bigger ecosystem of nature. And so on the hikes, you get to experience it. Making students prepared for a changing world means getting them out into that world. And actually, uh, rather than simulating in a classroom setting, uh, the, the conditions of that real world, we needed them to be able to have experiences that would allow them to you know, be leaders in, in that world of the future. But when you move into the business world, you don't function in a siloed way. You don't only do math, you don't only do science, you don't only do the arts. Everything mixes. This gives students a really clear taste for what that's going to be. It also is a chance for them to almost be apprentices in something that they are interested in. Allowing an apprentice to work with a master really hones skills. I think that that can either help you to go, yeah, this is where I want to go, or even say, nah, I don't know that that's really what I wanted. I'm going to try something else. Um, so I think it's invaluable to give students this kind of opportunity. The night of the, the final expo for next term, there was an energy, there was an energy that the parents brought in because they were excited to see what not just their child did, but to see what other kids did. And can't even count how many parents said, I can't believe this is what these kids have experienced. How can I do it? Can I be a part of it? We started feeding off of each other. Everyone was on level 10. They were so excited about what they were doing. And the teachers, if nothing else, were excited about helping the kids show what they were, were doing and show what they were learning. Everyone was feeling this intense sense of adrenaline, like, wow, we got there. Then when it was over, we all crashed because it was just like, I can't believe we, we pulled that off. There's a comfort level to what we know. But if you actually look at the goal of any kind of education, it is change. We are changing kids fundamentally. The whole goal is to make them better people. When people come to my office and say, hey, I have an idea for this thing. It might sound crazy, but can we try it? I think if we don't try those things, then we don't grow as a school. And our students don't have an experience that will be impactful or meaningful. Let's try to empower people to take risks that will make a student experience better. Looking forward always means looking at ways you can change things to improve the life of not only current students but future generations of the Hunt School of Princeton.